Good morning. Welcome to the Ocean. My name is Charles Porter, and I'm one of the pastors here at the Ocean, even though I'm living in America. And over the next few weeks, as this community continues to grow and expand, and we're adding a second service, one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that we understand, people coming into the community understand who we are. And largely that has to do with what we call our identity statement and our non-negotiables, our identity statement. We are a Christ-centered, culture-creating community church. And we talk about that all the time. The second thing that we are is we have eight non-negotiables. Now, this isn't biblical as far as some of these are negotiable. Some of these, some communities focus on, some others don't. But this is where we are going to die. These are the things that we say, I don't care if you're not comfortable with this, this is not the place for you. I'm sorry if that sounds really harsh, but this is just who we are. This is what we want our DNA to be. And so last week we talked about Outwards Oriented, how we have created a place that welcomes outsiders, that outsiders understand what's going on, on, encounter God, enter into a loving, caring relationship with people outside of the context of all the religious baggage. This week, I want to talk to you about what it means to be biblical, our second non-negotiable. We are a biblically-based community. What does that mean? It means the Bible is our authority. It's where we draw everything from. Now, it's 66 books written over 1,600 years by dozens of authors in multiple different languages. But the amazing thing is there is one message. Basically, Jesus is coming. Jesus came. Jesus is coming again. And it is living in relationship with us. Now, a lot of other things in there that we need to learn, but that's the core. The Bible speaks to us of Jesus. And so, no other book in the history of the world has caused so much confusion. If you want to find something to prove, you can find it in the Bible. For example, you can go to the Old Testament if you want to get a divorce, and Moses allows it. But a few chapters away, you've got a guy who's burning his daughter as a sacrifice to the Lord. So you might want to get a little bit bigger picture of what the scriptures have to say. Other things, people read it and they don't even realize what they're reading. How many sons did Abraham have? How many wise men were there? Or, very commonly, I've heard taught in Tanzania, poverty is a curse. And yet, in some of his earliest teachings, Jesus said, blessed are the poor. Now, you can do one of two things. You can say, well, he didn't really mean it, or you can explain the scripture away, but that's what the scripture says. That's where we're going to live and die. So what does it mean to be a biblical community? First of all, we want people in the community reading the scriptures. It's amazing how many people, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, you better read the book, find out who Jesus was, really in his own words, in the words of his early followers, before you make a decision or as of an, er, a young follower, you need to be digging into the Word of God. Start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Don't start in Ecclesiastes. It doesn't make any sense. And if you can't live out 1 Corinthians 13, you shouldn't be digging around into the Old Testament prophets. It's just not going to be helpful for you in the same kind of way. However, having said that, Here's what we want everybody to do. We want you reading the Bible, the whole Bible, from cover to cover. Not just the segments that you like, not just Psalms 23 and 1 Corinthians 13. We want you reading the whole scripture because this gives us the great picture about who God is. Matter of fact, I'll repeat a challenge I gave last year. If you've never read the Bible through, if you'll read it from cover to cover, I'll give you 10,000 shillings. And if you're a young person, 14 or under, if you'll read the entire New New Testament, I'll give you 10,000 shillings. How's that for a deal? But I shouldn't have to motivate you with money to read the scriptures. Secondly, I want you to, every time you hear a preacher, pastor, whether it be Steve, Pastor Steve, myself, Pastor Roger, anybody who comes along, I want you to dig into the scriptures and say, does the Bible really say that? Is that really what the scriptures say? Because everything we do should be able to line up with the scripture and question people who take one scripture and just preach for 45 minutes minutes and not out of the scripture. Finally, I want to give you a couple clues for reading the Bible. First of all, when you read the scriptures, ask, what does this tell me about the character and the nature of God, who God is? Secondly, does this in some way point to Jesus? What does this tell me about Jesus and his work in my life? And then thirdly, how does this change, how does this change me? 
What do I need to do so that my life could be impacted by the Holy Spirit and changed to reflect more of this reality? That's our second non-negotiable. We're outwards oriented and we're a biblical base. We're going to live and die by this book like Christians from all generations past and all generations to come will find in the scripture the way of life. Thanks and God bless. Have a great day.